Good morning, Kingsley community. Pastor Colleen Wehrman here coming to you with another daily devotion for May 26, 2022. Be still and know. Broadmoor, Broadmoor, Broad Street Publishing Group. They don't have names of authors on these devotionals. That's all I can tell you. Okay, purpose in your heart. Proverbs 20, verse 5. One of these days, I think I'll, I'll pull out the most read, most well-known Proverbs. Preach on those. They'll be fun. It's hard to preach on that book. Proverbs 20, verse 5. The purpose in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. God has placed a purpose in every single one of us. We are all meant to play a beautiful and important role in his eternal kingdom. We've each been placed with the skills and passion to fulfill God's purposes both here on earth and in his kingdom forever. Life and circumstance can disguise our purpose. We can get caught up in the daily grind and forget to focus in on the eternal vision he's breathed into us. We must make it our goal to unearth our unique purposes for which we were specifically created. When we understand this purpose is when we will truly begin to live fully alive as we were intended to. So this writer is talking about the purpose in a man's heart is like deep water. You have to have wisdom and understanding from God to continually pray, what is my purpose? You know, it really saddens me when I hear someone who's in their 70s say, I don't know what my purpose is. So I call them up. I say, hey, I've noticed this in you and that in you. Would you mind maybe stepping up and volunteering for this? No, I don't know when I'll be around. So really, do you want to know your purpose or do you just want to live for yourself? Good God. You know, I just think it's so funny. I, I don't know what my purpose is. Yes, you do. And if you don't know what your purpose is, for Pete's sakes, ask one of your closest friends, what am I good at? Then dig into that in the scriptures. Find out what your spiritual gift is. Your spiritual gift is probably what you're pretty good at, what you're passionate about, what you love to do. It might not be your job. It could be your job, but it might not be your job. It might be a hobby that you love. How can you use that for God's glory? How can that purpose be used to bring others to know this Jesus you know? It's as simple as that. If it's bird watching, okay, join a bird watching group and maybe talk to some people, get to know them first, and then maybe say, hey, after, the, after we get done bird watching, I thought I'd do this devotional, you know, based on bird watching. There's probably a bird devotional or a photography devotional or maybe you're good at you know, down in Florida, they have a paddle boat church, paddle, paddle board, not paddle boat, paddle boarding, you know, where you stand on. So they start sitting on their boards in the water. They do a devotional. They say a prayer. They paddle board. They get done. They eat. They take some prayer requests. They go home. That's their church. They do it every Sunday morning. You know, um, if you got nothing else, that'll work. I mean, that's at least a small group that's getting to know each other. But then God will grow that small group and God will want them to use what they're learning to bring others to know him. And so he'll push that group to serve maybe, to do something outside of just themselves. God's good like that. So everybody has a purpose. If you're alive, you have a purpose. As Solomon, who wrote the book of Proverbs, also wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, and he said, in the human soul is a piece of of eternity, a piece of God built into them. And it's, you know, call it a whole, call it a piece of God that needs to be filled with the purpose that he's created you from. Four, he's given us gifts from the foundation of the earth. Even before we were born, he knew what it was we were going to be good at and that he would use to bring others to know him. So I hope that was helpful today. If you don't know your purpose, talk to somebody who's close to you. What is it that you're passionate about? And figure out how you can use that for God today. Um, this Sunday, I'm going to continue on the Lord's Prayer. And we are looking at forgive us our debts or trespasses or sins. <laughs> Gospel of Luke talks about forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us or forgive us as those who we are indebted to. Matthew says trespasses or debts, forgive us our debts. And um, many churches use trespasses. So 
difference between sin, debt, trespasses. Is there a difference? Are you a sin, debtor, or trespasser? Are you a sinner, debtor, or trespasser? So we'll look at, at that. We'll also start with a couple of um, funny quotes from kids who have done the Lord's Prayer and what they thought the words meant. So <laughs> that'll be fun. And then I'm thinking our prayer time will look a little bit different. Um, we're going to give a moment of silence during our prayer time. I'm not going to take any prayers up from the congregation. I'm going to um, possibly put the pictures on the screen of the little ones who had passed at Rob Elementary in Uvalda, Texas, um, and their teachers. So we're up to 19 kids and two teachers, plus the grandmother, who is still alive, I understand, and the gunman. We're going to lift up... Um, We'll just call him Gunman because I don't know if I know his name. And uh, just in remembrance of them, we're not going to give the gunman any play. We're just going to, you know, obviously there was something wrong with the gunman. Maybe he wasn't mentally ill, but obviously he couldn't contain his anger, rage, whatever it was. Um, they were saying they don't see any mental illness behind him. But in my opinion, if you go shoot up a bunch of kids, there's obviously something wrong. You're either a sociopath, which we know that they have mentally ill, or you're on something or something's just not right. So, you know, I've seen so many people say, enough with your prayers. We need you to do something. Well, you know what? We're a church. We believe in God. And so I'm going to remember the kids, um, memorialize them with their name, and pray for the families. Um and, uh, you know, we have all kinds of legislation coming up in our annual conference in the United Methodist Church next week at the Grand Traverse Resort. So we'll see what goes down there. But until then, this is what we can do. We can pray for that community, the loss of the children, and um, memorialize them. And to remember that... Um, Violence, you know, Jesus would not tolerate violence. It's not his kingdom way. So we need to pray for the church to be the church and to spread the kingdom love to the world. Um, and, you know, we brought in a um, coach who had lost his son to suicide in this community. And it was very... Um, lowly attended. It wasn't attended very well. And, you know, which just surprises me since this community has lost three children to suicide um, all in the same year. I think that's been about three years now. Um, and I, I, I'm surprised that it was not well attended. It seemed like sports were more important. Um, sitting outside cutting grass was more important. And someone said to me, well, maybe they're just over it. Maybe they don't want to hear about it anymore. Well, this man, you know, had some good thoughts on, you know, some of the things that um, they saw that maybe might help someone else. Um, so, you know, kids like the shooter at 18, obviously something was not right there. Um I'm not giving him an excuse. I'm just saying, you know, maybe one of the things is that we can do is to continue to support um, children and youth ministry. It's in the church where they will learn that they are loved by God and their identity comes from God, not from what the, church, the school says about them or what the mean bully says about them. Their identity comes first in Christ and they have a purpose. And maybe if they know that, they will um, decide a better path, a different way. So I think it starts right in the community and in the church community. So if you have the gift with kids and you're not teaching Sunday school yet, I got to ask you why. Um, if you don't have the gift with kids, oh, that's not for me. Why aren't you putting money in the plate for Sunday school and youth? If you really care about um, these kids, is there a reason why we're not, um, you know, why is the Rock after school program not full? Sixth or twelfth grade. You know, they can house quite a few kids. It's, it's fairly well attended, but it could be attended more. 
Why, why are you letting your kids go at home and sitting on the phones and playing games by themselves? Guess when kids get into trouble? From 3.30 to 6 when their parents aren't home. You know, why are we not um, paying for a mom to have an after-school program for her fifth grader where there's no after-school program in the community of Kingsley for fifth grade? School goes up to fourth grade. Rock starts at sixth grade. Why is there not something for fifth grade? That's why we started our Monday after school VBS, so we could reach those fifth graders. Um, I would love to have an after school program just for fifth graders. I don't have the capacity. I don't have the, I have the building, but I don't have the volunteers. You know, why are we not stepping up to that? You know? And don't think it doesn't happen to the Jocks and the Jocks families because, you know, the kid that, um, that the father who talked about his kid who committed suicide, he was the all-star athlete, the quarterback. So, um, you know, we have a lot of mental health illness with these kids, a lot of anxiety and depression, and it starts early. And one thing the guy said was that when it starts early like that, especially if it's a chemical depression, like a chemical in the brain, um, anxiety and depression, it gets worse. So you really want to nip it in the bud, recognize it and nip it in the bud right away and get them on some kind of medication and therapy. Because what happened with this kid is he thought he could handle it himself. And so he, you know, in sixth grade, he noticed, you know, when he was sad, he was really sad when, you know, he didn't want to do anything when he was, you know, that kind of thing. It, you know, it, we need to get rid of the stigma because what happens is then those kids end up either getting bullied or they hide it really well or they um, they end up being loners. Um, now, not everybody who's depressed has clinical depression. It could be situational depression. But I don't know about you, but middle school is a situationally depressed place. <laughs> so fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, these poor kids, you know, they deal with so many pressures. And, um, you know, yet yeah. here's what I get. Church is too early. We're going camping. Fine. Watch me online. Um, I've got too many sports. The kid can't go to this youth event. Um, we don't like the rock. It's full of weird kids. Um, my kid's safe at home. No, they're not. Not if they have the internet and the phone. They're not safe, especially when they're unsupervised. Don't give me that. <laughs> they have to watch younger siblings. Okay, you know what? We'll get the younger sibling in the after-school program. And we'll figure out a place to put the older sibling. You know, do something. You know, maybe all of us churches in the Kingsley area need to get together and create something for these, you know, fifth graders. Um, I don't know. Something. We need to do something. We need to, just like it is, we need to pray. We need to, you know... Lift up the names of these loved ones. Pray for the families as powerful stuff. But then maybe we need to all, you know, dig in our pocket and pay for someone's fifth grade, you know, babysitter. Someone that, you know, a, you know, 18-year-old or 17-year-old that needs a job. You know what? You're going to watch my fifth grader. You're going to take them here, there, there. You're going to give them a plan that they have something to do instead of sitting at home. And a sixth grader, you know, whatever. What are we going to do? Um, you know, these kids do grow up and they do have issues. And we want to be able to be here to help. So how can we help you? You got ideas? Send them to me. And we'll try to figure out what to do. If I got to get with the other pastors, I will. We'll figure out how to do it. Um, the Rock is available, 6 through 12. You, you're afraid your kid doesn't want to go down there? Too bad. Tell him go anyway. <laughs> I'll go down there. We got a music room. We got games. We got all kinds of fun things to do, you know. And if you think your kid just wants to stay home and do homework, I just want to stay home by myself in my room. And that is a dangerous place for those kids to be by themselves, not supervised. So, um, yeah. And if you notice these things, in your kid or in someone else's child take it seriously because they'll either you know they might grow up to be that shooter I, mean, I don't know what to say the shooter was a little fifth grader at one time 
you know. So that's my soapbox. Um, I see lots of Facebook posts about how much people don't like the Kingsley schools, but yet I didn't see any of those people with their loud mouths that post on Facebook about how much they don't like the school anywhere near that um, mental health awareness program we brought to The Rock on Monday. Why weren't you there? Oh, you just like to complain. Okay. Well, enough said. Let's keep praying for our kids. They need it. Have a good day.